Sivanati Nonchinga retained his IBF uh, light flyweight title in, for the first time when he appointed mandatory challenger Reggie Suganop from the Philippines over 12 rounds in East London last weekend. The South African came out fast in the first round to take the fight to Suganop and just before the bell sent the Filipino down in the center of the ring with a right hand to the side of the jaw for a count from the referee which the Filipino beat. Nonchinga fought the majority of the fight on the back foot as Suganop kept piling on the pressure but the specials one's counter punching and defense was the difference on the night. Two judges scored the fight 116 to 111 and the third judge 117 to 110. It was a double whammy for the young boxer as he was crowned male boxer of the year at the BSA Awards barely two days before the fight. He joins us now to talk to us about that win and that fight. Sive, thank you so much uh, for joining us. And I guess uh, double congratulations to you on the fight and winning the male boxer of the year. How do you feel? Uh, first of all, I'd like to say good evening to you, Kukwena, and also thank you for having me in your show. It really feels good to be here. Um, to be honest, uh, I feel good, I feel blessed, um, I feel happy, I feel excited because I've been working so hard. Um, it simply means that all the like sacrifices that I've made ever since I started boxing, they, started, they, they are starting to pay off now. So I feel good, I feel grateful, and I feel blessed. That's did, what I can say. Did you expect to win the male boxer of the year? I mean, it was a tough, uh, I mean, the, the three final nominees are good boxers in their own right. Is it something that you expected? To be honest, yeah, I wasn't surprised at all, at, at all that I, uh, like I've won uh, like, uh, the first male box of the year because, like, as we all know, that I'm the only credible world champion here in Africa, not just South Africa. So, yes, um, I, was, I was ready for it, and I knew, I, I, like, I knew that uh, I'm, I'm going to get it. So I wasn't surprised at all. And, and yeah, I feel, I feel, that's why I'm, like, I always say like, I feel great because like it motivated me to even like defend my title and have like um, more conf and gain more confidence. Let, let's talk about that fight. Two days after you win yeah. the male box of the year, uh, you couldn't even attend the awards because you were preparing for uh, that fight. Uh, it was a mandatory fight. Uh, how much did you know about Suganov? For the fact that he, he came into the fight, both of you unbeaten, did that not unsettle you a bit? To be honest, I know no, not at all. Um, um, if you look at straight at my record, like all the boxers that I fought, they, they were undefeated, and I'm the first person to defeat them. So, like, Reggie Sugano, he's a good boxer. He fought for the number, the number one spot. I ain't going to take it away from him. And I believe he's, he's still going to be the next, uh, like, world champion after me. But I was ready. I uh, watched his tapes uh, with, with the whole team. We sat down. Uh, that's why we had to like stick to the game plan and make sure that we get the victory in. Yeah, the only goal, the only common goal that we had was to get inside the ring and successfully defend our title. Looking at the fight, so I wasn't surprised at all. I wasn't surprised at all. I wasn't shocked by his record because I was ready, physically, mentally, and spiritually. You put him down in the first round. Did you expect the fight after that to go the distance? Yes, because that's a world title fight. You can't expect like a, a, man, a, a number one mandatory challenge to just quit just like that. So I was ready, and even if when I like I've managed to to knock to to get the knockdown, um, the corner kept on reminding me to just stick to the game plan and box because they believe in my capabilities, and also I also believe that. Being um, like fighting like at the back foot, uh, it, that's what I'm good at. And, and so the, everything went according to plan, yes. That, that was my next question, that uh, it, it almost looked like he was putting so much pressure on you because you fought the entire fight on the back foot. Was that part of the strategy? Because I could see that you were catching him very well, especially when you were counter-punching, and he was not able to catch you because of your head work. Yeah, we knew that he's a pressure cooker, um, and also he, he once like said it to one of his interviews that yeah, like he the, the whole team they know that uh, I'm gonna move, I'm gonna run. So 
we already we took it like all of that is an advantage because we already knew that they're uncomfortable with a like a moving target. So that's the only reason why we had to stick to the game plan and make sure that we make them miss and make them pay. So it was like the the part of the game plan. If you watched um, like um, my fight back in Mexico, I was a, I, I, I was I was I was like I was I was fighting like a, like I was I was staying more in in the trenches more than anything else so now we got the title it was about to defend it nothing much and give like in attention to the to all the people who came there in numbers you, you're fighting at home i mean you're you're you, you are next to the title fighting in mexico you were fighting at home cap, uh, capacity crowd what was it like to hear uh, the people from home singing, you know, screaming in your uh, and, and calling you out, uh, calling you the special one, singing those beautiful Tosa songs. What was it like to be part of that atmosphere? Um, it was a dream came true. Uh, my dream came true last Sunday because I used to go there as a young kid and watch the likes of Zalani Jeje, Ngosnachi Choyi defending like their titles. And I used to watch that and I told myself that one day, like um, I was happy, um, I'm proud of myself, uh, which is the that, that's the only reason why I was like fully focused to the fight and I didn't panic even if he caught me with like uh, good punches. But um, the only thing that I wanted to do was to just give back like each and everything like um, here in East London because that's where like the boxing started. What's next? It's a mecca of boxing. So I was like, okay, cool. Let me just come back home and, and, and just entertain my people. Um, to be honest, uh, I would love to, to unify the division, but I'm going to sit down with my management and, 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 and see like where from here. Because uh, now that we successfully defend our title, there's uh, Gonzalez, there's Ken Shiro. So I would love to unify the division. Fantastic, Siva. Thank you so much for coming through to talk to us. And I guess uh, congratulations once again on uh, winning your title and uh, for being crowned the main boxer of the year. Thank you so much, Kutko. And I, it really is good to be here. And yeah, thank you so much. That is uh, Siva Nati, the special one, Nonchinga, who was crowned just last weekend as the South African male boxer of the year. Two days later, he went on to defend his uh, IBF title and, as he said, the only credible world title.